Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fashion Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith, and I'm here as always with Marcy Carmack. Marcy, you're almost dressed for uh, for back to school. I mean, it is getting close to fall, and we are taking a look at fall trends 2021 today. And uh, Marcy, you said you actually read the uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald book, The Great Gatsby, in school. I did, right? <laughs> and it was one of my favorite teachers. <laughs> So it made it very exciting. And well, then I got that award and I was really thrilled with that. You got the Jordan Baker Award? Chic, 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 chic work. I like it. Well, uh, the reason we're talking about Great Gatsby is I referenced uh, Nicole Frighten from Harper's Bazaar magazine. And, and she wrote an interesting quote about fall trends 2021 and that designers really were working in a vacuum during the pandemic and they had to anticipate uh, what people would be looking for when they return to some sort of a life of normalcy, some semblance of normalcy, and that uh, designers really had to recognize that people's lives are probably forever changed, and they might now be looking for something, something a little more fun and glamorous and lighthearted, maybe something akin to Return of the Roaring Twenties. That was <laughs> Nicole's thought, which actually turns out not to be all that original, because I have to say, Marcy and I have discussed this number of times during the pandemic, well, I was a little annoyed when people, many people did offer that same notion that somehow magically that was going to be the natural outcome of this time, is that we were somehow magically going to return to a time akin to the Roaring Twenties. So I think Marcy and I are both open to that, but we do, we do acknowledge that it probably takes a little effort to manifest something like that in the world. But that is what Fashion Coffee Hour is about. We believe that uh, uh, fashion brings beauty into the world, and wherever there's fashion, there's culture. Wherever there's culture, people are advanced morally, economically, and spiritually. So we're going to take a look at this uh, 1974 film clip from uh, the trailer uh, of The Great Gatsby, which is a filmed adaptation of Francis Scott Fitzgerald's epic American novel. <laughs> This is a fun little trailer. It's got nice music and a beautiful setting at Marble House on Rhode Island. And what about Robert Redford? Yes, of course, the wonderful costuming by Robert or by um, Ralph Lauren. So this is really where Ralph Lauren became uh, got his notoriety. Was he was the wardrobe? He did all the wardrobing for The Great Gatsby and others. Oh, Marcy, there's your stripes. You love stripes and everything American classic, uh, really. What Ralph Lauren's all about, and he's been doing that for 50 years. And I'm on his trajectory. <laughs> what will I do when you are far away and I am blue? I don't see what will I do? I don't think Jordan's in this clip. Fabulous. Kind of a bad girl. There's a lot of faster than shimmer and gold here. Brighter. The we love this excitement. hat. The days when all of life was a fantasy, theirs was the richest fantasy of all. All those crystals. I keep noticing how wide his tie Robert is, too. Robert Redford is Gatsby. Mia Farrow is Daisy. In F. Scott Fitzgerald's great love story, The Great Gatsby. That might have been Jordan. Of hope, that might have been Jordan Baker. A time of wonder. But most of all, it was a time of romance. A precious time together. that little thing on the top of the car. What kind of car is that? Well, that, of course, Marcy is a Rolls Royce. <laughs> I think that's the... Uh... There is definitely a word for that. Winged victory or something ghost. There's definitely a word for the head ornament. Winged victory sounds right. Yeah, that's not accurate, exactly. but it's something like that. So we'll get a call in from one of our, our viewers. <laughs> But I do love the car and, of course, the character of Jordan Baker because Jordan Baker and Nick get into it about driving. That's one of my favorite metaphors for the film uh, is that uh, an accident occurs when two bad drivers collide. So. 
You want to make sure it's okay to be a bad driver, but just make sure you've got a safe driver with you at all times. I don't think uh, Mr. Fitzgerald was all that sympathetic to the characters of Daisy Buchanan and Tom Buchanan. I think he refers to them as people leading dangerous and reckless lives, but I think we all have made mistakes and we all can see that in many ways life is precarious for a number of reasons. But uh, a fun clip, uh, very interesting with, about um, Ralph Lauren and all things American glamour. Uh, another fun um, talking point or uh, observation in the clip, I do love when the, the party's raging and the, the storm rolls in and the party doesn't stop. They simply just cross the threshold into that beautiful interior space. So Marcy, we're gonna, we're gonna cross the beautiful uh, throughout the threshold into the beautiful space and take a look at this fall fashion. You put together these slides for us and you're going to walk us through the main themes and the main, what, four or five themes are, what do we have today? We've got... We've got sequins, knits, tailoring, color, and puffers. <laughs> okay, good. Good old puffers. So here we're starting off with Prada and we're looking at this really rather traditional looking coat yes so it's a military inspired coat um so it's part of the tailoring trend but it's uh an original take on on that it's got it i can't figure out what i call that edge but it doesn't go straight down it asymmetric yeah asymmetric what <laughs> Anyway, I'm just working the slides, Marcy. <laughs> I don't know. You call it whatever you want to call it. Um, and then on the right, we see some sequins. Yeah, fake fur. On so that really is that really is a trend. And then it's not just black sequins. There, it's got green and yeah. gray, and and that's Prada. She doesn't do anything ordinary. But this is a lot of shimmer and glam, and this this kind of does look like it could have come out of the Great Gatsby clip. Well, it's got a lot going on here. It's a modern day glitz, version. <laughs> glitz and glam, but it's pretty, it's pretty fancy. Yeah, and it's meant to be worn in the day. You know, back in the times of S. F. Scott Fitzgerald, they only wear sequins at night. So here's another sequin dress with a uh, partially fake fur wrap around it. Um, so that one's interesting too, and. You know, Prada, this is very forward and not something everyone would wear, but you get ideas for things you might wear. Yeah, it's got an unusual proportion and, um, right, it is unusual. I mean, I'd like to sort of like to see the dress maybe by itself and see if that was a little bit more wearable. And over here, we're seeing the same asymmetrical coat. Yes, and it's um, beautiful blue with a different colored blue on the glove and a purple bag. So that's a nice color combination that you wouldn't normally see. Yeah, it's lovely. And on the left is a sequined coat, which I don't think I've ever seen. So that's kind of original too. Mm -hmm. And then on the right from Rachel Comey, you can this is a version of a puffer to me. I mean, I got my puffer two years ago in Paris, but this Rachel Comey jacket is sort of an updated puffer. And this is wool. So this is pretty furry. And you're not going to have an animal rights issue with this. <laughs> That's right. And here's another Rachel Comey knit. We'll be getting into some knitwear and it's a pretty color green. Mm -hmm. And Rachel Comey is more accessible than the uh, Prada or Burberry or any of the high-end designers. Mm -hmm. So on the right, we have Burberry with an unconstructed tailored jacket that might be an oxymoron, <laughs> but it's tailored and it's unconstructed. Or well, it's a little, literally deconstructing here with these flaps folding down. So we might have to have Ray uh, this evening explain that to us a little bit more. Ray, of course, is our expert on all things Burberry. 
It's a nice color, beautiful palette, soft. I love um, camel. There's another Burberry look. It's the fall trend of sequins. And this, this jacket is really well done, I think. The shade of the sequin is great. The shape of that jacket is great. Mm -hmm. We love it, right, Stan? Yeah, it's very pretty. It's uh, surprisingly understated for sequin, sequin jacket. <laughs> Meant to be worn in the day. Daytime, now, so not just for evening anymore. Right. And then we've got Mark Jacobs with the puffer. Yeah, this is Mark's version of the puffer. <laughs> it's a big one. So um, then we'll see some more scaled down versions. MSGM is an Italian brand. And the designer spoke about kids going to discotheques, that they're dying to go, and these <laughs> are the things they're gonna wear. And on the left <laughs> is a puffer over a pink dress with purple boots. And on the right, we see a yellow top, a lot of, lot of knits, and that's just an interesting color combination. I love it. I love- um, Yes, this is similar to what we saw with Valentino last week as far as the colors, the brown and the yellow and the pink. They, his were more vivid, but this is the same type of approach to color mixing. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy to do, um, but I think you should, everyone should try. Another furry fake fur that's big enough to be a puffer. And on the right is a dress, a shimmery dress to go to the discotheque in. And that, do you think that is sequin also? Is that a sequin no. dress or it's just shimmer? It's a shimmer. Shimmer. And here's a multicolored dress on the left. And that's, that's akin to the, uh, the art inspired looks that we saw with Valentino also. Is that probably a sub trend, the idea of art, artful, uh -huh. art inspired yeah. patterns? So and this is a, a scaled down puffer. Well, actually it's not a scaled down. It's like a normal wearable puffer coat over. Well, yeah, scaled down from Mark Jacobs. <laughs> <laughs> Anything scaled down from his. And here we get into some knits. ALC does some great things. And this is a brand that's accessible. And I think this knit dress is, is a great look. Yeah, it's a substantial piece, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, and what's going on here? This is a I top, just, literally a top, but not enough of a top to actually cover your top. That's right. So this is for the runway or, you know, editorial. And I'm guessing they will do the same thing, but make it a little longer, but it'll probably still be cropped. And then I was saying, you know, I mean, it's been a lo long time since the 80s, but I feel like I haven't seen anything like that since then, but I'm sure I have. You mean the knit dress? Ruching, yeah. Well, that ruching, tight. And then uh, here's another knit, which I think is fabulous and oversized and yeah, wrap the scarf around your neck. And it's an interesting, um, textured to the knit. Yeah, that's also substantial. It's a statement. Yeah. Statement yeah. piece. <laughs> so here's another sweater dress on the left. Wow. That goes wow. all the way. Goes all the way <laughs> that down. That is the whole thing. That's the full meal. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one on the right is um I don't know what fabric that is, but it's a it's synthetic. A it's a knit and it's, it's the ruching. You're calling that the ruching. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Well, Marcy, thank you so much for sharing that quick preview of the fall trends. I don't know if we're, we are going to make it to the 1920s in that, but if we are, we're going to try to be more sympathetic than uh, Mr. Francis Scott was to his characters because we want to be supportive of anyone who's bringing beauty into the world. That's what we're all about here. And we hope you found some inspiration today. And we hope you can join us uh, in the evening, uh, Monday evening, always at 6 p.m. Central Time here at Fashion Coffee Hour, when we invite the fashion panel back to discuss uh, this uh, topic of fall trends in more detail. So until then, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.